Hi, and welcome to Quirky Books with Katie. Today I'm going to be talking about the most disappointing books that I read during the year of 2015. I did this type of video last year, I thought it was a lot of fun, so in case you didn't see that video, I will link it down below. Now in this video I'm going to be talking about books that I read during this year that I was expecting to love and kind of didn't. They fell flat for me in some way, I'll explain why, so let's get started. The first book that I'm going to be talking about is Codename Verity by Elizabeth Wine. Ween? Still don't know how to pronounce her name. This book is about a friendship between two pilots that takes place during World War II. I love historical fiction novels and this book actually won the Prince Award, so I was expecting to really love this, you know, historical fiction, girl power. Unfortunately for me, I found it a little bit boring. Now, I know that a lot of people love this book, I just, it wasn't really capturing my attention. I don't know why. I don't know if anyone else had this problem. Let, if you did, let me know in the comments down below. The next book is Never Never by Colleen Hoover and Taryn Fisher. I don't know if this technically counts as a book because it is basically two short stories slash novellas that go together that were only released on Kindle. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you probably know that I am obsessed with Colleen Hoover. I think I've read like every single one of her books and not given anything under four stars. This I wasn't just wasn't a fan of. I only read the first part because I wasn't really interested in reading the second part. Basically the premise for this story is that there are a guy and a girl who are together and they keep losing their memories and kind of have to figure out why. I wasn't really compelled with the story even though the first part left off on a huge cliffhanger and I just wasn't really interested in what happened to the guy and the girl. This duology set of novellas I think. It kind of had mixed reviews but I was just overall not a huge fan of it. Next on my list of disappointing books is The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord. Now I really enjoyed Emery Lord's debut novel. I think it's called Open Road Summer. It was actually one of the best books that I read this year. So when I figured out that this book was coming out this year I was really excited. I thought it was going to be great. Basically it's about a group of friends and their friendship and I was just not into it. I feel like the main character was just one of those stereotypical smart girls. I feel like a lot of YA authors kind of in contemporaries try to make their characters the typical smart girl and how they think a, a girl that gets all A's in high school would act and I feel like the main character in this novel just it wasn't a very realistic portrayal of that type of character and I just didn't really care about a lot of the characters and this just fell flat for me and it sucked because I was really excited about it. But I think Emery Lord has another book coming out next year which sounds amazing. So I'm really excited for that one. The next book that is on my disappointing list is yet another contemporary. I feel like this year there were a lot of great contemporaries that I read. There were also a lot of not very good ones. And that is The Last Time We Say Goodbye by Cynthia Hand. And this book is about a girl whose brother commits suicide and kind of dealing with the aftermath of that. And I was really excited about this book because I really enjoy reading books about mental health. I feel like it's a topic that is kind of taboo and isn't very talked about a lot. So when I heard about this book, I thought it was going to be good. However, the main character was just not very interesting. It just didn't deal with the topic in a very good way. I felt like I just felt like I was expecting more from it. I was expecting it to be this gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching portrayal of depression and mental illness and for me it just wasn't that. I don't know what it is with me and Cynthia Hand books. I read the first book of her Unearthly Trilogy which is actually the first book that I ever reviewed on my channel. Please don't watch the video. It's very embarrassing. And I thought that one was okay. I thought this one was okay too. If she writes something else I might try it. Maybe not. The next disappointing book on my list is very unfortunate. It actually came out last year and that is The Blood of Olympus by Rick Riordan. This is the last book in his Heroes of Olympus series which I love the Percy Jackson series. That's one of my favorite series. Grew up with the series. I am probably one of the only people that doesn't like the series as much as the original. I like it. I don't love it. This is definitely though my least favorite book in the series. It just did not tie up the story well enough. It didn't include perspectives from a lot of major characters. We barely ever saw Percy and Annabeth which is ridiculous because they're like the main characters and I felt like the end of the battle scene at the end was very rushed. It wasn't wrapped up very well. And then Rick Riordan announced that he's coming out with a new series next year centered in Camp Half-Blood called 
the Trials of Apollo, which I guess that makes a little more sense, but if this was supposed to be kind of the farewell to Percy Jackson, I just did not think that it did the series justice. I only the next book that I'm going to be talking about is Ferris by Marissa Meyer. It's a part of her Lunar Chronicle series, which is a series of kind of futuristic retellings of fairy tales, and I think it comes in between the second book, Scarlet, and the third book, which is Cress. Now, what I was expecting from this novella was kind of an expose on Queen Lavana and why she is the big bad villain that she is. I feel like I really am interested in villains as characters and kind of why they act the way they do. And I felt like this just did not really give her enough justice for why she's doing what she's doing. She kind of, I guess, had a bad childhood, but it was still kind of just her being a crappy person and I just didn't think that made her that the most interesting villain in this story. I really don't think this novella is necessary to enjoying the rest of the series and I was very disappointed by it as a whole. Next we have another contemporary and that is Easy by Tamara Weber. Now I actually picked this book up because my friend Whitney over at Witty Novels was raving about it and I kind of have a love-hate relationship with New Adult. I figured I'd try this out. It's kind of the typical New Adult good girl meets the bad boy from the wrong side of the tracks and although he's not really as much of a bad guy as everyone thinks he is, thought this book was just so cliche. And I don't have a problem with reading cliches, archetypes, that kind of thing. I just felt like this one wasn't very unique. It was like so many other books that I've read before and it just wasn't intriguing enough for me to really enjoy it. I know a lot of other people really love this series though. I know there's more companion novels after that. Maybe I'll read one of those and try it out. Let me know down below if those are better. But overall, just was not a fan of this one. Now the last book on my list may surprise some of you and that is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. I was really excited about this one because it's basically a retelling of Beauty and the Beast through Fae and also I think there's a Chinese myth thrown in there so I heard all of those. I'm not really a big fan of Fae books but I was like yeah this sounds great. I know everyone else loved it. This is some people's even favorite book of the year. I was just not into it. I felt like the main character was interesting, but I felt like the main love interest, Tamlin, was just such a boring character. He just wasn't very well fleshed out, and I feel like it really took a long time for the story to get going. But my biggest issue with this book was that there was insta-love. So much insta-love. And I know it's supposed to be the Beauty and the Beast story, the girl meets the guy, they fall in love, but I felt like they hated each other, then they loved each other and couldn't be apart. It was just very... I was just expecting so much more from it. I'm probably going to read the second book in the series just to see if it gets better, but I feel like they're going to introduce another love interest and it's going to be a love triangle and I don't know. I just, I ended up giving this maybe two and a half or three stars was just not, not even that I wasn't a big fan of it. I was just expecting so much more from Sarah J Moss. So those are my most disappointing books of the year. If you agree with any of them or disagree, let me know down below. Also, let me know which books you were disappointed in throughout the year. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you subscribe to my channel and I hope you have a great day.